Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 52. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 5, Dr. XLSM, click on the link below the video. And I'm going to start on the sheet B4. And in this video, we just want to talk about some charting tricks for binomial distribution. This will also help in next chapter when we do the normal distribution. We want to visualize. I want the probability right here, probability x less than or equal to 8. The red ones represent that height of these columns and the probabilities associated with them. The blue ones are the ones above. And I want to be able to change this to 4 and have my chart update. So visually, I can see 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So the probability of x less than or equal to 4. And as we know, our Excel function binom.dist functions, and the other distribution function we'll learn later, I always go from whatever the cumulative, from the smallest number up to our x that we throw in. All right, so let's go over to the sheet B5, and we'll create this chart from scratch. Here's our n, our p, our x, and it could be anything, right? Um, right here, I'm going to type x. Uh, P of X, and then here I'm going to create, well, let's do this first. I'm going to highlight all three, and I'll show you that other label in a second, and add some color. And now I want to create the number 0 to 10. I'm going to type a 0, Enter, 1, Enter. I'm going to highlight those two numbers. I've established a pattern by highlighting them, so when I copy them, it'll know to add 1. And you can see the little screen tip, it goes down to 10. For bigger data sets, like when you have, in our last video we had 42, you might not want to copy all the way down. You can right click the fill handle, drag down one, drag back up, and let go. The trick was there that I right clicked, right click, drag down, drag up, and then this little cool menu comes up and it says down here at the bottom you point to series. And it'll ask you, hey, this is it, want to fill in columns. It's going to step value by one. You can put any value one you want, want there. And I'm going to put 10. Now again, you know, if you had 42 or 100, that would be the way, because it automatically does it. Our p of x, this is going to be our binome.dist. And our number of successes are our x probability. The uh, number of trials is 10, f4, comma, the probability of success, 0.5. I'm locking both of those in cumulative. This is 0. We want the exact one. You use the exact one to make your uh, probability distributions and your chart pieces. All right. So there we have it there. Let's add them all up. Alt equals is the keyboard shortcut for auto sum, and then Enter. I'm going to drag this down 1. All right, now let's highlight all this, add some borders. I'm going to add some color because these are formulas. You know, use, whoops. Now let's plot this. And actually, let me show you a different one. We don't have to put this. Remember, we always have to delete it. So I'm going to highlight that. Go to Insert Column, Column. Or in 2007 and 10, you can use Alt F1 to put the default chart, which happens to be column on my computer, right on this sheet. I'm going to delete that. Delete these lines. Um, I'm going to come back to that later. These are not the correct labels. Remember, we have a number. Um, oh, we didn't add one, so that's the default. We're going to go up to Design. Be sure in this, the chart is selected. Design, Select Data, and we can edit it. Click OK, click OK, so we have that here. And we will come back and create a fancy label and whatnot. Now, the question is, how do we do this? And we want it to change. Sometimes, right now, we want it to be less than or equal to 4. If I change this to 8, I want it to show and calculate. We're going to have to use the, learn the if function here. The if function. Let's just think about that. There's a 4 there, right? Uh, in this cell, I want to say if this number right here is less than or equal to 4, 
then please put the probability here. And then I copy the formula down. If that cell right there is less than or equal to 4, then I want to calculate this probability right there. I keep going all the way down. If this cell right here is less than or equal to 4, then please put this right here. When I get down here, I'm going to say if this cell is less than or equal to 4, then please put this here. Otherwise, if it's not, please show nothing. Now, this will this is a logical test. I'm asking the question, is 5 less than or equal to 4? It's false. So when it's false, meaning for all of these cells, I want these cells to show nothing. Up here, all of our answers to our logical test is the cell two cells to my less, less than or equal to that. All of these are true, and so I want the actual probability. Now here's the thing. The if function's goal is to put one of two things into the cell. And those two things depend on a logical test. Is the x over here less than or equal to 4? The thing that we put in the cell if it's true is the probability. The thing we put in the cell if it's false, a blank. So let's see how to do this. Equals if, and our logical test, a logical test. We've already seen logical formulas in this class. There's only two possible results from a logical test, true or false. So my logical test is going to be two cells to my left. Is that less than or equal to our x up here locked f4? That logical test, true, 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 false, 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 comma. And then the rest of the if function is easy. It's just the logical test is sometimes hard to create. Value if true, I want this probability. Otherwise, if it's false, I want nothing. Now, the syntax for nothing in Excel is double quote, double quote, close parentheses. So that's cool right there. Control Enter. I'm going to double click and send it down. Now I change this to 8, and that is the thing of beauty. 4, all right. Now I'm going to bring my chart back over here. I, actually, before I do that, I want to create a label here, because I want the legend. I want a color-coded legend so I can tell. So I'm going to Um, we saw how to do labels back in chapter two, right? We do a text label. So in double quotes, I want probability, n double quote, and ampersand. That's the join symbol. I'm joining some text in quotes. That's one thing. I'm joining it with this other thing right there. Now that's not going to work. That shows me part of it. So I have one thing, join symbol, two things. So I need a third join symbol, and I need to double quote, close parentheses, double quote. Now that's still not going to work. I actually need an x there, so I'm going to hit F2. And I'm going to come right here and type an x. Should I do a big x or a little x? That's fine right there. All right, so that's a text formula. We saw one, two, three things, so two ampersands. And we can come back and edit when we mess up and don't do it correctly. Now, this formula right here, I just joined those two things. That way, if I change this to 8, this label changes also. I'm going to keep this as 4. Now let's add this. Now I'm going to go and actually, we don't need to select that, but that's what we're going to add to the chart. We're going to have to select the chart, go up to Chart Tools, Design. Select, I want to add series name. That's the series name gets put in the legend. I'm going to highlight that and delete it. And then highlight these numbers right here. We can see the add right there. I'm going to click OK. Um, I don't think this will affect it, but I always get nervous. So I'm going to make sure I can have the right labels there. Click OK, click OK. It means both data series then have the same labels there. One of the, I don't think it would have affected the chart, but I like to have them both there. Now, there's over no overlap here. So I'm going to click on this red one and either right click Format Data Series or use the keyboard shortcut Select and then Control-1. 
not gap width. That's what we did for histograms. We definitely want separation. Remember, this is discrete, which means we visually need to say there's some gap there. It's overlap. Oops, I'm sorry. Overlapped. And then you can see right there. All right, so let's try it. This is exciting. Eight. Ah, oh, that is beautiful. Seven. Six. Now, let's do two things. Let's create a, uh, a label at the top. And um, oh, we can show, I got it. Let's show our legend. Layout. Mm, I'm going to show mine at the top. Let's see what that looks OK, that looks pretty good. I, let's, we're going to change that, to, and we'll add an equal sign, and then we'll show the probability. That means we have to calculate it over here. Uh, but I also want to add a title. I want to say binomial distribution n and p. So I'm going to click right here and do a text formula. In double quotes, and if you're a bad typer and speller like me, you better hit F7, which is spell check in edit mode, because once you enter the formula, spell check won't catch it. Okay, at n equals space n double quote ampersand n equals this. I have some text and a cell reference. So there's two things. So one ampersand. Now I want another ampersand. N equals that. And p equals. So I have a third piece right here. Now I want a fourth thing, so I click right there. All right, so that ought to work. That's a text formula. Now I can add, and notice the beauty of this, of course, is if this changes, boom, then that changes, and this will change also. All right, so I want this as a t chart title, so I could click on the chart, layout, chart title above. Click here, equal sign, and then click on this cell. Right click and then change the font in the mini toolbar to whatever you want, 12. Let's, ch let's check this. Let's change this to 0.5. And sure enough, it updates. Change it back to 0.4. Now let's uh, change this, 4. And sure enough, look at that. Just like magic, we visually can see 4 and uh, below gets that red and above gets that uh, blue. Let's go ahead and change this label. Now changing this label is going to get tricky a little bit, but no problem. I'm going to actually move this chart right down to here and then right click and insert. I'm touching the six, the Excel row header, right click insert. And I'm going to, since I already created this, I'm going to say equals this. I'm going to use my binome dist number of successes trials probability cumulative one and uh, it's not one it's zero so there we get the same probability oh <laughs> it is one if we were to check this here, we'd go like this. Highlight all of these. And then you can use the uh, status bar and see right there the sum. Right there, you can see the sum, 0.63. All right, so now I want to add this as a label here. Now, this is going to get a little tricky because uh, we can't, well, let's just edit this and see what happens. Again, it's easier to come up here to the formula bar. Sometimes it's really hard to click. I'm going to type in equal sign, and then a space, and then arrow over there in ampersand. Now, I'm already going to tell you what's going to happen. When you click here, that number has all sorts of unrounded digits not showing. So when I expand this column here, it shows me all of that. Now, if you don't want all of that, uh, you could do something, since this is for the um, 
label. Down here, we want to leave them all unrounded. But here for the label, we can round this. There's an official way to round something in Excel. So I could come to the front here. And you know, if you use your decimals, people do that all the time. That's not rounding. You can see formulas don't see number formatting. That's called number formatting. But there is something called the round function. Now, we have to decide one, two, three, four, uh, fourth place here. So you always count from the decimal to the right, one, two, three, four. And if it's a four, then that means you want to round it to the four. And you can use the round function, round. It wants the number. That's just that thing. And you click at the end, comma, and number of digits. That's where you put your four. Now, this is beautiful because the round function actually changes the formula result. So no longer, now, we, can, we can format this however we want with those decimals up there, but it's always going to be rounded to exactly that position. So now we have a beautiful label. And look at that. Is that not awesome? I'm going to change. I'm going to change this back to right here like that. And there we have it. So now if I change this to uh, and 5, 3. All right, so now when we change an input here or here, the data will change. The label here will change. This calculation here will change. Then the label. We'll see a different uh, presentation on the chart. This legend will change. The label will change. Amazing dynamic chart. All right, we'll see you next video.